Two. Hello, I'm Paul Peterson. Providing adequate and affordable public transportation options is critical to meeting the needs of the rapidly increasing older adult population. Older adult non-drivers need reliable alternative transportation options that help them to preserve dignity, maximize independence, and provide access to the full range of activities that are vital to their quality of life. Today we will be addressing the challenges of using public transportation and finding out just how to make best use of local options. Please stay tuned for Aging in LA. According to the American Public Transportation Association, more than half of non-drivers over 65 stay at home and often become isolated because their transportation options are limited. This can lead to medical, psychological, financial, and social problems. And that has a knock-on effect on the nation and the economy as a whole. So. How can older adults find reliable and affordable transportation that gets them to the medical appointments, social activities, and even to work on time? Today's guests are from the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority and the City of Los Angeles Department of Transportation City Ride Program. And they're going to help us explore the options. Our guests today are John Fong, Director of Specialized Transit, Los Angeles City Department of Transportation, and Jane Matsumoto, Deputy Executive Officer at Metro. They will tell us about the city's choices for maintaining mobility. Welcome, John and Jane. Thank you so much for joining us. Los Angeles is a big place, all spread out, and the issues of transportation are really vital here more than any place else in the nation. John, we met earlier this week. Can you tell me about some of the exciting new programs available for our seniors? Yes, we have in the city of Los Angeles the City Ride program. Mm -hmm. A variety of uh, municipalities have similar programs, but ours combine um, all the various programs that the various cities have. We have a service for dollar ride, a subsidy for taxis, and a subsidy for our uh, dollar ride program. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I, I have plus all of those dash yeah. buses, right? Yes. All right, that's the best deal in town. Twenty-five cents for a ride. That's really great, they're, and they're all over the place. Yes. But let me tell you something about our city ride program. Mm -hmm. It's really inexpensive, and we formed it similar to uh, how food stamps work. Yes. And the way it works is an individual would submit an application, and the qualifications are 65 or over, mm -hmm. or an individual with disability. And they would send us um, fifteen dollars and forty two cents forty two cents for the post oh yes <laughs> or six dollars and forty two cents if they're a low income individual I see and they would provide us documentation as to that as well mm -hmm. now, and what do they get for this six forty two or fifteen forty two eighty four dollars in script back and with that eighty four dollars they can take fourteen and purchase a bus pass mm -hmm. or use up to twelve dollars and purchase a taxi ride or for four dollars in that script uh... call up their dial ride and uh, get a ride up to twenty miles from their home that's fantastic I, this is news that is going to be of serious interest to to our seniors and jane how do you fit into this equation here as a dep deputy uh, executive wh what are you administering well i'm responsible for implementing the region-wide transit access pass program mm -hmm. Uh, known as TAP. It's right. a smart this is card. new. You'll want to pay attention to yeah. this. Yes, yes it's a uh, very exciting electronic payment card. Right. They come in two colors blue for those who are regular fare riders, mm -hmm. and then of particular importance to this audience is the orange card, which are for seniors, disabled students. Uh, they bear a picture, and um, this is a very new way 
to provide much more convenience in riding the county's different transit systems, including uh, John's uh, city ride program. We're working together to see how we might be able to potentially take his current paper scripts and put them onto this one and very same tap card. That's fantastic. And, and I, I don't think for a moment that seniors are somehow incapable of learning a new system. This one is pretty darn simple. Um, I mean, here's your card, that you hear the big stanchion that says tap on it, and you literally tap your card. Exactly. It says smart, simple, and secure. <laughs> there you go. And, and let's talk about that security issue. I know many people say, oh, I'm paying in advance for something, someone will steal it from me. But John, you were telling me we do have security systems in place. Yes, we do. First off, the individual who sends us here, their uh, eight, uh, $6 or $15, mm -hmm. we will load uh, $14 mm -hmm. if they want one month of pass, um, 28 for two, and, and so and, on and so for the on. number of months I see. Uh, into that card. If they lose that card, they would notify us that it's been lost, mm -hmm. and for a small fee, they would... Um, get a replacement. Get a replacement. Exactly. I mean, well, see, that, that makes sense, and we all misplace these things. It's a, not quite as bad as car keys, but darn close. Right. <laughs> so, and, and this is system-wide now, right? This is going to be throughout the greater Los Angeles area. This is coming. Metro mm -hmm. has uh, done the work of designing the system on our bus and rail fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken several years to test the integrity of the system itself. Uh, Currently, we're rolling out our regular, the blue card, mm -hmm. monthly and weekly passes. Right. Uh, starting in January, new applications for our senior riders are going to be accepted and processed onto this orange card. Right. So um, in the course of a year, um, municipal operators who are also joining us to install equipment LADOT being one, mm -hmm. uh, will be able to use, have their customers, their riders, use these cards on their system as well. And whether you're John's uh, <laughs> subscriber to his City Ride program, mm -hmm. or you're a senior monthly pass rider on Metro's program, right. uh, they can carry the one card. It serves as a payment uh, mechanism as well as validates their um, uh, their eligibility to be a senior rider. Right. And, and, we, and we should tell people that there, all these systems are, are really very good when it comes to access, whether it's our kneeling buses or the fact that we have elevators in the metro stations, that you needn't be intimidated if you have some physical impairments. Isn't that, I mean, we, we were even able to see that. John. That's true. We rode on one of those elevators yes. and made it very easily into the uh, metro center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, wheelchair access is important, and I think also our bless our citizens they have come to understand that everybody's part of this and if it takes a little extra time for a bus to kneel down and get someone uh, care they are amazing number of helping hands absolutely yeah. and uh, Paul it's probably important <laughs> for our senior writers to learn that in the next uh, 12 months or so they're going to see um, rail gates in our subway stations and some um, uh, light rail stations as well mm -hmm. and for seniors who need special access we definitely will have uh, ADA compliant gates that accommodate those riders um, it's uh, much more uh, secure for them as well so that it's not an open system uh, we are able to verify that those who use our system actually have valid fare mm -hmm. and are getting in um, through a recognized uh, turnstile system that's uh, used throughout the nation and other transit systems. Well, it is my dearest wish that people begin to access this and then naturally occurring older communities will will develop around these transportation hubs. Isn't that really the, the hope for all of us? It, it certainly is. Uh, I think in the gas crisis that we've had recently yes. we've had a increase in ridership mm -hmm. and even though gas has gone down in price we've still maintained that uh, a, a large amount of it anyway and part of that is social consciousness but the other part is honestly cost you can go much further on much less money if you make use of public transportation that's Absolutely. just the truth and many of our seniors are on fixed budgets that's right um, we have uh, both LADOT and LA have very well-priced uh, fare products mm -hmm. for our seniors. 
And we really feel um, strongly that in introducing a fair payment card like TAP um, will help to remove barriers for seniors who might not understand differing fare structures. Right. Paul, you know, uh, Gardena uh, Municipal Bus Lines right. is one of the participants in this program. Uh, they can and I brag about them all the time. <laughs> really and besides that, we have the prettiest buses in town. <laughs> yep. So when they get their fleet outfitted with uh, their fare boxes to accommodate this tap card, then they can come into town, they can transfer on to LADOT or Metro. They don't have to worry about whose fare structures are what, right. or what they pay for having exact <laughs> change even. And, and that's very important because it is so tedious to say, well, what is it today? I mean, which bus am I on? Dollar right. fifteen, dollar thirty-five, whatever it is. Exactly. And and that's a big time saver as well, right, Jen? You were mentioning that yes, to me. Yes, it certainly is because <laughs> what it saves is the time that people search in their pockets for the change to put in, and that takes quite a time. If you got yes. five or six people behind you, it, if you just Tap your card and go. That's what it is. Well, I, That's I it agree. Is. You told me a number when we first met that floored me. 30 million is the number of our yes. ridership here? Well, just for our DASH program, uh, we have 30 million. Of oh. course, I think uh, Metro is much larger than we Really? Can. Now, well, what are the numbers there? Which well, we um, carry, a, we have about <laughs> 500 million boardings a year. Wow, 500 million. Yeah. These are gigantic mm -hmm. numbers. <laughs> now, now, they're not individual customers, but no, that's... No, I understand. Yeah. No, and, and and, but for many people, the fact is, they, for even weekend excursions, it's often the most attractive alternative is to say, hey, we're going to go, for example, to the Long Beach Grand Prix. Right. It's easier to go with rapid transit than it is to go with your car and pay 20 bucks for parking. Absolutely. More and more, I have friends from the Valley who come to um, either Staples or to the Music uh, yeah. Center, and uh, they really, really enjoy mm -hmm. having you know, much easier access to, uh, than to fight traffic. Right. Now, is there is some discussion, is there not, about extending the, the service so that um, after hours or dark hours, for example, downtown, that they will actually have uh, increased service? Well, currently our DASH program, uh, up till the end of uh, this year, mm -hmm. w uh, operates from 6.30 to 3 a.m. to serve basically the uh, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion area, right. Music Center, all the way to LA Live. I see. And it's free. Wow. See, people need to know about this. Right? I have been echoing your words for a couple, three days now about it's not that we don't have services, that people are unaware of them. Now, Jane, is there going to be a big a public education campaign to introduce the DAP cards? We've been working on that. Yeah. Uh, we've been informing our writers in the form of brochures and uh, car cards, we call them. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly in the next coming months, you'll see more articles in the press. Uh, hear more about us on radio and print media. Uh, we certainly intend to have much more information available on board our vehicles. Um, speaking of LA Live, we're yeah. very excited that uh, we are going to have a press event there on uh, December 17th wow. uh, to launch their opening and that's a partnership uh, with LA Live to introduce their customers to public transit access right there. Uh, yeah. That's a great idea and one of the one of the values of having um, elevated gas prices and now an economic downturn is that people are paying attention, and it is it all comes down to the bottom line. If, it, if it's if it's more efficient and cost effective to take rapid transit, people will do it. They just will. Now, if I might, it's time for a short break, and when we come back, we will continue our discussion on transportation options for seniors in L.A. And John will show us some of our transportation system beneath our streets. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Need a recycling center? Call 311. The toll-free number for non-emergency services. 311. Your one call to City Hall. Graffiti removal? Call 311, the toll-free number for non-emergency services. 311, your one call to City Hall.
the Department of Public Works Bureau of Contract Administration keeps the city's projects on track, ensuring safety first and fairness always, from the streets all the way to the stars. Welcome back to Aging in L.A. Our topic today is public transportation, your ticket to independence. Our guests are John Fong, who is with the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, and Jane Matsumoto from the Metropolitan Transit Authority. Jane, you were mentioning to me during the break that a special feature of interest to seniors is that they can cut their time in line when they need to renew this card. Sure. Right now, the process is such that for seniors, uh, with an eligible uh, card, uh, it requires them to go monthly mm -hmm. to pick up their, their sticker, their monthly sticker. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this group of uh, uh, seniors, we think that with the TAP card, uh, if, you if you choose to register your card mm -hmm. and set your account up so that it can be refreshed for you every month, then um, it avoids that walk to your supermarket or wherever you're purchasing your monthly stickers and the next time you ride for the following month and you present this card on the fare box or our rail uh, validators, it will recognize and refresh your card automatically I for see. you. That's it, that is so important because it, it, there, there are hard dollars involved when, in terms of efficiency. Now, you mentioned to me, John, that there are over 800 outlets throughout the city where folks can, uh, can, can ha uh, get their cards or, or their monthly passes. Yes, they can. Um, and also, they can get their applications at many of these locations to apply for the card, and they'll be sent to them. And uh, later on, after they've got the card, they can <coughs> go to one of these locations and load their, their card up with and, a monthly pass. And, and we're starting to do that. Now, Importantly, there are some changes coming which seniors should be aware of. Can you explain those to us, please? Yes. For our City Ride program in July, we hope to introduce the City Ride account card. Account this card. will replace City Ride script, mm -hmm. and this will be used for taxis as well as our Dollar Ride program. And when they send us their $15 or $6 mm -hmm. check, they will indicate on that check. Uh, with a code that we will give them how much they want allocated toward their city ride card and how much they want allocated toward their tap card mm -hmm. and we will notify um, uh, Metro uh, about uh, how much they want loaded and we'll coordinate everything. Well I, this makes so much sense to me and I, I'm assuming there will be within the public education campaign folks going out to our senior centers and talking to, yeah. to help people with these mobility issues because it's it's amazing how often right. people become shut-ins because they're tra they, they think they have no transportation right. options. For our seniors, we're actually taking one of our buses mm -hmm. and we're converting it to uh, a registration office. Oh, One-stop shopping. We'll take these buses uh, to senior centers and other community centers. Uh, seniors who want to register for these new TAP cards will be able to do that. Um, and we want to make it as convenient and seamless for them to uh, get through this transition. That's fantastic. You know, recently John gave me a tour of the Red Line station at Normandy Avenue. So take a look. And we're expanding a lot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, rail lines and uh, more bus services than we've had oh, in, in many years. Our metro rail system is a regional system. You see the various lines that we have started here and we are continuing to expand. Our red line is one of our largest lines. Of course, that's going out to the San Fernando Valley as we can see. And I understand you or your wife uses the... Right, the we're here on the blue line. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have uh, for the airport with the green line. It's a wonderful service as well. And the gold line that serves from the uh, Union Station area to uh, Pasadena. Wow. And each of these are fed by 44 municipal bus lines throughout the county as feeders to uh, these various services. 
Well, okay, John, what do we have here? Well, this is the new tap card. Uh-huh, tap, I see. And all you have to do is tap and go. And it goes. And there's a little sign that says go. <laughs> this is a very important feature for our disabled community that all of the facilities are accessible. Yes, throughout the county, each of the facilities have uh, accessibility at various levels mm -hmm. of each of the stations. And this is important because if you go beyond this sign, you'll need a ticket. And if you don't have a ticket, you're going to get a ticket. <laughs> and I mean the other kind of ticket. Now, wasn't that fascinating? And you see, it's a pretty simple process. Gene, talk to me about some of the other options that seniors have beyond the internet for getting the new forms and, and getting their, their own tap card. Sure, absolutely. Uh, starting in January, mm -hmm. we are going to ensure that our seniors who go and pick up their stickers that they're currently applying to their other uh, paper laminated uh, ID cards, mm -hmm. when they go pick up those stickers, they are going to get brochures that have an application attached to it. Right, atta right with it. Right there. Right. And so with the instructions, they're able to send it in. Mm -hmm. it, it won't require internet access. Mm -hmm. There's also going to be a number on there that they can call. And if they need help to fill the application form out or they want to have some additional questions, uh, certainly clarified, we, they can pick up the phone and get direct um, human interface by phone. And that's, you know, that remains very important. Uh, the prompts, the electronic prompts, are not always perfect for the question that you have. So you right. will have human operators to talk to you. Yes. Uh, that's very good. And we yeah. expect that our Department of Aging mm -hmm. will have their staff available to help them fill out some of the forms or answer some of their questions at well, any rate. They are wonders, and I'm here to tell you they are wonders. And folks, yeah, I, I keep telling people this. There are so many services available in this city that folks just don't know about. But if you dial 311, 311, pretty darn simple, you can get connected to the information that you need. And I know the folks at the Department of Aging are going to be up to speed on this and be able to help. Or and if they can't help themselves, they'll turn you over to the person who can. Now, when we talk about the numbers here, one of the things we have to keep in mind is the senior population of Los Angeles is going to double here by 2020. What sort of plans are, are in the works to accommodate this dramatic growth uh, of uh, our elderly population? Well, certainly at Metro, we're going to really work on doing everything we can to remove barriers for the aging. Now, uh, Paul, you and I talked a little bit earlier about how seniors feel a little bit intimidated about going online to apply for uh, their senior passes. Mm -hmm. But remember, in our rapidly aging baby boomer generation, uh, they're going to be pretty computer savvy, technology savvy, and we want to make sure that when they get ready to apply for their passes, we're ready with technology to ensure that they have conveniences so that uh, they can get their passes online if they want. Uh, we're looking at cell phone technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the Orient and in Europe, they have uh, cellular phones enabled with a chip. For seniors, that would be very, very convenient. Uh, they can get their schedules. Uh, they can get uh, when the passes become available, any kind of special programs, that uh, reward programs that might become be available. Those, those are things we're planning for the future. Well, and the technology is, is there to be utilized. But sometimes the hardware needs an upgrade, too. Anybody who grew up in Los Angeles remembers those smelly old smoky buses. What, what are we looking for in terms of new equipment, ever more modern, efficient fleet? Well, certainly. You've seen the low floors that we have on our dashes yes. now, and those really benefit and are enjoyed by our seniors and disabled individuals. Right, and I catch them on the freeway. Ron and I are early birds, so I see them in the morning. Man, they're beautiful, in fact. They are nicely low-slung, and people seem to make use of their time. Right, it's uh, very wheelchair, made for wheelchair accessibility. Mm -hmm. You talked about smelly. You know, L.A. has the largest natural bus fleet in the country. Really? Yeah. Uh, Natural that, gas. That's really yeah. good so to hear. That we're trying to be eco-friendly, too. Ah, well, I, I have noticed the difference at, at LAX, for mm -hmm. example, where it has that collection of buses. 
Um, thank you both. Uh, it, it, unfortunately, our time is up for today's edition of Aging in L.A. And I want to thank our guests, John Fong of our very own Department of Transportation and Jane Matsumoto of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. And now, it's time for our feature on Aging in L.A., Senior Stat Shots, where we look at statistics and information that pertain to senior citizens. Once again, our facts come from the newly released L.A. County Seniors Count. Since we talked about public transportation for seniors today, let's look at some of the statistics of how public transportation is working for seniors. First, 23% of senior citizens in Los Angeles County find public transportation easy to use. Exactly the same percentage, 23%, think public transportation is difficult to use. 5% say that public transportation is unavailable in the area where they live. 43% do not use public transportation. And 8% had no response. Our suggestion is to use public transportation as often as you can. It's convenient and definitely good for the planet. And that's today's Senior Stat Shot. Now, you can get your own copy of this fact-filled survey by going online to www.ladcss.org, which is Los Angeles County Community and Senior Services. Just click on L.A. County Seniors Count, and the full report will appear. Or you can have a hard copy sent to you by calling area code 213 738-2065. That's 213-738-2065. The Los Angeles Department of Aging produces this program with City View Channel 35 so that seniors living in Los Angeles and surrounding communities are well informed on the many issues that face them in everyday life. And also to let you know of the many services that the Department of Aging offers our senior citizens. Now, We'd like to hear from you with comments on the program, what you like, what you think can be improved, and we'd like to hear your ideas for future programs. So please give us a call. The number's there on your screen, area code 213-252-4088. That's 213-252-4088. Call us with your comments and ideas. We look forward to hearing from you. I'm Paul Peterson for the Los Angeles Department of Aging, the people here at City View Channel 35, and all of our guests on Aging in L.A., thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.